Hi, my name is Aaron Rhodes from Falafel Software. You're watching the Telerik Rad Grid Grouping Tutorial. In this session, we're going to take a look at how to use the grouping functionality of the Rad Grid and customizing it for a specific purpose. During this video, there may be code examples written in either Visual Basic or C Sharp. However, the concepts are the same and code is provided for you in both languages. In this example, we're going to create a website that has a grid with products that are grouped by the product type and the company that creates the product. I've started by creating an Ajax enabled website and all we're going to need to do in the toolbox is drop a rad grid onto our form. And we can configure our data source directly from the smart tag. I'm going to use a SQL data source and I'm going to connect to the Northwind database. If you need more information about how to install the Northwind database, refer to the link above. And I'm going to save the connection string and I'm going to select some specific columns here. Test our query and finish. That should fill in our grid and I'm going to go ahead and choose a skin at the same time. I rather like this hay skin so we'll choose that. Now just to see where we are, I'm going to go ahead and run this. You should get a debugger dialog. We'll just click OK on that. And this is just a standard grid. This can be improved upon quite a bit though. You see, first of all, it's long with a vertical scroll bar and there's a lot of data squished in here and a supplier ID, category ID, which really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. So let's get to work improving this. The first change we can make is to convert the category ID and supplier ID into actual category name and supplier name. I'm going to do that by configuring the data source and instead of using the columns from a specific table or view, I'm going to do a custom SQL statement. If we go in here we see what the select statement is right now, but if we go into this query builder and it brings up a dialog that really has a very intelligent way of building a query just how we need it. If I right click in this top area here it will allow me to add a table and I'm going to add the categories table. I'm also going to add the suppliers table. If we move these around up here, it'll show us the structure of this. And we can select some columns here that we want to show. So supplier ID and category ID, we don't want to show those two columns. But we can add some columns here by selecting them from the table. So the company name we do want and the category name we also want. And this has created an inner join that will replace the ID numbers with the names. We'll click next and finish. Now it will ask us if we want to clear the data source schema of RadGrid1 and we'll click no. That takes care of replacing our supplier ID and category ID with actual text that is meaningful. Let's take a look at how to enable grouping. If we click on the smart tag, it's really just as simple as clicking this enable grouping checkbox. And that will add the header here that you can drag columns into when you run the application. And let's take a look at that right now. 
you'll see that we have this column header here. And if I wanted, I could drag the category name up top and the company name up top. And that would have this nice grouping effect that we want. The other columns that we have here, in this specific case, maybe they don't really make sense to have the ability to drag a unit price up here. It would just separate things out into a nonsensical way. So in my example, I'm going to make it so the end user does not have the ability to drag the columns up here because we're going to set it for them. We're also going to clean up some of the column names here and since we're adding the columns into the grouping permanently we're going to remove these two columns here and if we look at the groupings here it says category name and it shows the category and it shows that everywhere it's kind of redundant information so additionally I'm going to make that disappear so it just shows that it's a beverage with the company name here and whoever the end user is can figure out for themselves that it's a category name and a company name. So back to our Visual Studio. We're going to go to the properties view. To make it so the user can't change what columns are being grouped, we're going to hide the grouping column. You can find that under the grouping show group panel and set that to false. I also want everything to not be expanded automatically. So if we go down to the master table view and change the property groups default expanded also to false that will show all of the groups collapsed when the application is first run. The next part is kind of tricky. In this group expressions property is a collection. This is where we're going to customize how the groups are displayed and how we set the groups to be already set without the user having to do it. So when I click on the ellipsis in the collection I have the option to add a group by expression. I'm simply going to say group by category name. And we'll add a second one, group by group by company name. That creates the two expressions but it's not quite complete. If we were to run this right now, it would group, but there wouldn't be actually any text in the grouping headings. We're going to have to go to the markup to fix this. If we scroll down, we see the grid group by field, and this is where the grouping was identified. That's how we made it so the user doesn't have to drag the columns up there. It's already set when the application is run. But we need a little bit more code in there to actually set the header text. So in the grid group by expression above the group by field, I'm going to add a select field. I've just pasted in this code here and you can find the documentation for the select fields in the Telerik documentation for grid grouping. But I'll explain right here what we're going to be using. In this select field we have a grid group by field that is going to have a field name of category name, a field alias of category name, and a header text of a space. If you make the header text property just double quote double quote without the space it will default to the alias name. Since we want to eliminate the header text altogether we make it a space. And the header value separator is usually a colon, and I'm making it nothing. We're going to add another one of those for our other group by expression, but we're going to need to change the category name to company name on both of those fields. One last thing we need to do is these column names are joined together and look sort of generic. So 
we go into the Smart tag and click on, I'll move this over so you can see, the Open Property Builder. This will bring up a dialog that allows us to configure the column properties. If we click on Master Table and then Columns, you'll see the available columns here. The category name and company name we're actually showing in the grouping. So we don't need to have these as columns in the rest of the grid. So I'm going to delete both of those. As for the rest of these, the header text is what I'm going to change. I'm changing product name simply to product. And the rest of these, I'm adding a space into these words so they don't look like generic camel notation. That should do it. Let's run it and take a look. And wow, what a difference. Now we have this all collapsed. It just says beverages, condiments, confections, and we can figure out what those mean. These column names look nice and non-generic. And when we expand these, we have our grouping that doesn't include the company name or the category name because those are in our grouping headings. And I think this looks really great. One of the advantages it has is the information isn't squished together. It's very easily readable. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate. In fact, three columns are sort of lined up in the space of one column right here. So it can free up your horizontal real estate. It's also grouped together nicely, so it's easy to browse through all the different products available. And really, th this is a great improvement to just the normal long list of products. This concludes our tutorial. For more information, follow the links above. And thanks for watching.